affairs of life are the most important. It's during this period that the foundations of good health and physique should be laid. Here in Shoreditch, three meals are provided for these toddlers. They are given plenty of the protective and bodybuilding foods. Cod liver oil, for example. A few children needing special care live at the centre. Others are brought in each day for a midday dinner. At the present time, such meals for toddlers are provided at only a few centres. The valuable results achieved will no doubt lead to an extension of the practice. At this maternity and child welfare centre, mothers are given regular instruction by a qualified dietitian in the importance and value of different foodstuffs and the best methods of preparing them. The great municipal bodies, Birmingham, Manchester, London and the rest, are also at work to check undernourishment. We cannot show them all, but the largest will serve as an example. Here is Mr. Herbert Morrison, leader of the London County Council, to tell you what London is doing. London's County Council is fighting hard to overcome malnutrition amongst the children attending our elementary schools. Where lack of food is found to be the cause, free dinners and milk are immediately provided at school. In the London County Council's area, there are 900 elementary schools providing education for 490,000 school children. About 6,000 of these children, because of the poverty of their parents, cannot be fed properly at home. So we make sure they will have at least one good meal every school day by providing a free midday dinner for them. But for some children, the solution of this problem of ill nourishment is not so clear and straightforward. These children, therefore, are sent to one of the Council's special nutrition centres for a full investigation of their cases. At each centre, there is a care committee organiser. Her job is to discuss the mother's difficulties and help her carry out the doctor's orders. Children under treatment attend the clinics regularly. At each visit, they are examined to see whether progress is satisfactory. The doctor advises the mother on diet and any other home treatment. Each year in the schools, there is a routine medical inspection for about 200,000 children. It was found last year that 11,000 of them were below the normal standard of nutrition. Anemia is one of the commonest results of malnutrition. So, at regular intervals, samples of the children's blood are taken and tested. Now, after the nation and the municipalities, let us turn to a still wider field of effort, the League of Nations. The League, in November 1935, set up a committee to report upon the problem of nutrition. Viscount Astor was chairman of that committee, and here he is to tell you something about it. Two points were emphasized in the course of the debate. Firstly, that the many people were underfed. And secondly, that there were surplus supplies of foodstuffs in some countries. The experts are agreed that there is malnutrition. In some cases, this amounts to hunger and even to starvation. But in all countries, even in a prosperous country like Britain, there is much ill health in, and suffering due to malnutrition. Ignorance about proper diets is widespread, and poverty is the main factor in malnutrition. Governments must face this and take proper steps to deal with, especially must they provide proper and adequate food for children. As regards agriculture, if people eat enough of the right food, there will be no oversupply. In fact, farmers all over the world will have to increase their output. Most countries also will have to import considerable quantities of food if the cost of living of the poor is to be kept low. This means that a wise nutrition policy will help to restore world trade and so be an important factor in the preservation of peace. And now, what must we do in England? Here is what Dr. McGonagall has to say. The average working class housewife, by rule of thumb magnets, knows pretty well what foodstuffs to buy to feed her family properly. Though she doesn't know the difference between a vitamin and a bus ticket, yet our investigations show quite clearly that as her income increases, she approaches more and more nearly to a really satisfactory diet. But there are hundreds of thousands of housewives 
who cannot afford to buy enough of the high-grade protective foods. All they can do is to feed their families with the lower-grade filling foods so that they won't feel hungry. Thus, there is no starvation, but their physical development may be interfered with and their resistance to disease lowered by a shortage of just those particular items of the diet which are so expensive. No complete solution of our problem is possible without considerable economic changes, either by providing the lowest paid members of the community with increased purchasing power, or with cheap or free milk and other protective foods. But such a solution is a difficult long-term matter, which will need all the community's patience and ingenuity. Meantime, for a large number of people, particularly in the, in the higher income classes, much good can be done within the present limitations by teaching proper choice and use of food. Let us briefly summarize the rules of good feeding. You'll remember earlier in this film how we classify the different types of food. To make up a good day's food for a working man, we must select some of each group to give a balanced diet. Fresh milk covers two groups, and he should have a pint of it. Two ounces of butter, some green salad, some green vegetables and an orange or a tomato. Then plenty of cheese or meat, and from the energy foods, bread, potatoes, sugar, and butter or margarine. Pastries, scones, and other appetizing foods are cheap sources of energy as well. But for the growing child, this is not a well-balanced diet. In proportion, he needs more of the bodybuilding and protective foods, and less of the energy foods. Less bread and sugar. Too much sweet stuff may spoil his appetite, and cut down the money left for his mother to buy green stuff, cheese, milk, fruit, and meat, which are more expensive, but will keep him healthy and help him to grow properly. Now you see how the food has been changed to give a properly balanced diet for a child. Babies need plenty of milk. They need daily cod liver oil and orange juice. So does the expectant and nursing mother. She should have green salads and vegetables and fresh fruit every day. Sea fish once or twice a week. Liver, lightly cooked, is a valuable food for her. These foods help to prevent anemia and rickets. Protective foods, milk, eggs, fruit, vegetables, are the most valuable for everyone, but especially for the children. Every child should have at least a pint of milk a day. Let us sum up. It is not the business of this film to attempt a complete solution to the problem of malnutrition, nor does it try to forecast the future. Its aim is to describe the existing situation but not in terms of harrowing pictures of the worst sufferers from serious deficiency diseases. These it has deliberately avoided. The real problem of malnutrition is less obvious and spectacular in its effects, but much more widespread. The most striking thing is that we are more acutely aware of the problem today than ever before, though we know that we have barely begun with its practical solution. The conscience of the nation is aroused. The new scientific knowledge has shown us a new standard of life at which to aim. A new charter is being written for the people of the world. And by whatever means the problem is tackled, a better level of health and nutrition must and will be achieved.